Let's say hello. Podcast is live. Okay. Good Hi, afternoon, guys. everybody. Hi, Donna. This is funny. <laughs> it's weird. I'm on the end of it today. This is you are on the end of it completely. We've got um, I've got like about hundred questions. A real grilling. Keep your answers <laughs> short. We'll get to the end. <laughs> What's that thing like question time or something like that? Where I like have to, yeah. I think I'll be sweating at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. I will be picking up any contradictions but no lovely seriously it's really nice of you to come on um we've had a fantastic week so far haven't we with some um great people on talking about um to, well we're talking about everything really from isolation to um dealing with that dealing with um meditation which, which was Neil yesterday and 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 Michelle and, and they've all brought along really good bits of, of advice and things that they've done that we can really relate to to um, keep their happiness levels up keep their energy levels up and yeah. you have volunteered to come along and talk to the group today um, about your things about the things that you've experienced and I think it's fair to say the work that you've done to um, to keep your energy levels up, your motivation up, your self belief up, um, and yeah, you're going to share some insights with us and hopefully inspire us and and help everyone see that things might be tough, but actually there's a lot you can do. There's always light. There's always light always at the end light. of the tunnel. I remember working with yeah. the Vodafone team in Stoke when I first started there, and they said, "There's," and I remember saying, "There's light at the end of the tunnel," and they were like, "They said, yeah, but it's an oncoming train." And I was like, yeah, "Okay, <laughs> I they, I, yeah, that's ruined that analogy for me." But I think it's just remembering, like, there is always light, and the tunnel might be very long, mm -hmm. no matter where you are in your mental health journey. And like, I've been yeah. in some very deep dark tunnels, which we'll talk about today. And it's yeah. not pleasant, and it's not nice. But I think just knowing that it will pass, and there's always help. Yeah. Like that's been a big. I didn't ever get through what I've got through on my own. Like I've yeah. I've, I've, I've asked for help. Sometimes I've had help help forced on me. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so if we talk about today, because I think you were saying, weren't you, and the Soul Squad said, I feel like everybody knows about it, but not necessarily everybody does. So Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've known you for nearly a year now and don't really know any of the details because mm. um, it's not the kind of thing you go and, and shout about. You talk about the positive side. You talk about the actions you've taken, but you don't yeah. necessarily talk about the dark places. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, they people can relate to those in some form or another yeah and, and I think they can see, yeah. well you know if that person's done it then then I can do it absolutely so do you want to share are you ready to I share I'm ready to story? share but I'm, I'm pleased you made me do it actually because I think it did make me think I probably <laughs> don't talk about it and Cheryl and I were talking to our coach last night and she was saying mm. I don't really know that side of you and I said and it's mm. for a, a long time it was because I hid it till I couldn't yeah. hide anymore but like now I live very differently and I feel genuinely like happy but I always describe it which is why we called it today is the black cloud because yeah at any given point I say this all the time Cheryl knows this like at any given point I always know the proximity of that cloud of like how yeah. far it is away from me and what what happened was when I was 19 years old 19 years old yes second year of uni the black cloud so because I didn't know any differently that like, I thought living with that level of just anxiety and upset and angst and feeling like on edge all the time like I thought that was normal I didn't realize yeah. normal what do you know what I mean but like I just thought that was me I didn't realize it was, yeah, yeah. Exactly was suffering from depression um mm. and anxiety and what happened was one day that cloud just engulfed me like I could not it was it was horrific it was like not being able to breathe and mm -hmm. and I had there'd been like again hindsight's wonderful there'd been lots of warning signs there'd been some insomnia there'd been crying a lot I'd, I'd spent my first year away from home at uni in Liverpool though back in the day before I had mobiles and I couldn't text I know. people you know so no, I, was, a queue for the I went from like living with my parents Yes, I did. I used to have to queue down. Well, I used to queue opposite the um what I thought was a taxi rank, and I then found out it was 
ladies of the night <laughs> waiting for business. I just thought they were all lovely waiting for a taxi every night. Um, like that's how naive I was though. Like literally yeah, yeah. Like, Street. Joe and I were like just so naive. Joe went to Ipswich, I went to Liverpool. And um, so, you know, when you're away from your family and you, I didn't have a lot mm. of money, like that back then, like we just, I, I just didn't have money. I had yeah. 18 pounds a week to live off. So I just thought it was all quite normal to feel worried and anxious and stressed out. Mm. And, mm. and what, what happened was, what I now understand was, I'd had trauma when I was a child. And it doesn't really matter what it was, because for mm. everybody that's different. This stuff happens to everybody and what happens is when you're little you don't always have the skills you haven't got the skills to deal with it so you kind right. of bury it and I used to say it's like there was like cupboards in my head where the doors were like like t locked shut like locked mm -hmm. zip you know taped up and I could pretend yeah. they weren't there that's literally yeah, yeah. What it was like for me and what happened was there was a program on television that, that, that set off a trigger and it, it was like PTSD, basically. It set off this whole, yeah. that's not what we diagnosed it as at, at that point, but I now recognize that that's what it was. So yeah. then all of these memories started flooding and all of this, and I had no skills to deal with it. And it was the yeah. memories and the feelings of a very, of a child. And there I was at like 19 year old away from home on the other side of the country. Yeah, and did you feel, like really feel those feelings powerfully that, that you've been locked in? And it came back as if it had happened yesterday. It was type literally thing. horrendous. It's like an emotional tsunami. That's the only wow. way I can describe it. Like I never, and I'll talk about how it changed over the years, but like that, that feeling of literally, so how it manifested was in my second year of uni, I basically, I, there was one day, I remember it really clearly, um, I was living in this house and I genuinely thought the house was haunted. There was so... Mm -hmm. I felt so ill in my environment. What I now realized was that was what I was given out. It was the energy coming mm -hmm. from me that was really ill. Um, and I remember I was up all night. I had the TV on, you know, back in the day when you had crap TV on all night. Like, And I had mm -hmm. this old portable, you know, where you had to fiddle with the aerial and you had to tune it in. <laughs> and I was, and I remember like, I, I had this thing of like, I'm just going to keep the telly on so that I can sleep because I need noise to block out my own thoughts. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I understand that, and I would not be able to sleep, so I would just sit and watch anything all night. And then, obviously, the next day I would be really tired. I couldn't, but then yeah. I couldn't really eat, and I just kept mm. getting like stomach pains. And then I kept thinking, God, like I can't study. I'm really struggling with my study. Like, what's going on? So then mm. I would stress about it and stay up late again at night, thinking I'm yeah. getting really behind in my coursework. I need to study, but I can't sleep. Oh, but I can't eat. So it was just this kind of vicious circle. And I remember saying, yeah. I, help I think I need to go to the doctors because I think I've got an ulcer. And she was like, and I and I remember it to the day. I remember Angela looking at me and going, Okay. <laughs> and clearly the Angela's thinking, what sure it's an ulcer. So anyway, I remember and I remember saying, I'll come with you. And I'm like, I'll go to the doctors on my own. It's absolutely fine. So I remember going into the doctors, long story short, and I remember the doctor saying to me, um, asking me questions and me explaining this pain in my stomach and I, you know, having trouble with my sleep cycle mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. And I remember him saying the words, Donna, you're depressed. Right. And I remember hearing a noise and I remember saying to him, that's not possible. I'm a happy person. <laughs> wow I'm, so I'm even with all of that you're still like telling yourself oh. but i'm a happy person i'm a happy person i'm telling him i'm telling the doctor he's wrong i'm like Amen. everyone relies yeah. on me i am the glue in the family like i can't i haven't got time to be depressed mm -hmm. and then i was like what is that noise like what is the noise and i realized it was me screaming wow and it was like this cry like this yeah you know when you see cartoons where there's literally liquid just like spurting so yeah. I was it was like I was being strangled saying the words, I'm happy, I'm happy. In my head, I was sitting there going, no, I'm happy. In reality, yeah. there was proper fugly crying and me just having this, the beginning of what was the darkest year. It took a year of my life. Yeah. And yeah. I was so lucky because actually what he said was, I'm not going to give you medication. You don't need to be medicated. You need to speak to somebody. You need to work out what's caused mm -hmm. this. Right. So I spent a year in very, very deep therapy with a lady called Irene, who literally saved mm -hmm. my life, literally. 
and that yeah. whole year of not being able to eat of not being I actually failed some exams in that year of uni because I couldn't mm -hmm. get out of bed like I couldn't I just went yeah. in there because the more you talked about it the more you remember, the worse it got. And I would just spend yeah. days where I didn't want to get out of bed, where my housemates would literally have to feed me. It was, yeah. I don't remember a lot of it. I just remember mm -hmm. that feeling of like being pressed down of this blackness, just this blackness and thinking, mm -hmm. will I ever laugh again? Will I ever be yeah. happy again? Will I ever, like really regretting even going, like I blamed Angela for making me go to the doctor. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had to speak about it. It was like in my head. And God love her, she put yeah. it for the love of me that year. Um, which of just not wanting, I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to be the happy person. Mm -hmm. But like I said, Irene was amazing. And what I did was with counseling is incredible to help you deal with something. So it got me past the point of like wanting to not be here anymore. Like I just wanted to not wake yeah. up. I would go to bed and just think yeah. I just want to be asleep because the sleep is lovely and I don't care if I don't mm -hmm. wake up like it's 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 not a nice world and then what would happen is like, like as you come through that and I came through that really heavy core duty counseling was I was yeah. like right okay so I don't want to just go to sleep anymore but I don't know how to live like I don't know who I am I genuinely yeah. don't know who I am because all of that I felt like I'd had all of this personality with us all of these years and it wasn't me mm -hmm. And it was the mm -hmm. scariest feeling. I remember thinking, I'm literally now, you know, I'm old, I'm nearly 20. <laughs> I don't know who I am. I had to spend me yeah. summer sitting exams because of the fact that I hadn't been able to do much that year. And then yeah. um, basically what happened was the next 10 years was like the wilderness years of the 20s, which was when obviously I got into a really unhappy marriage because I still hadn't worked mm -hmm. out who I was. Career-wise, yeah. we're doing brilliant. That was Had you stopped boring. the counselling? By this point, Donna. So the by, by the time you got into twenties, yeah, I was one year yeah. from university. But what happened was, I then had to go and do the year abroad because I studied languages, so I had to do a whole year abroad. Mm -hmm. So that then added like another layer of separation right. of distance, yeah. and more distance. Um, mm. So that was bizarre, and I think I just kind of put it in a box and thought, well, that's that's that mm. that's that. Then I trained to become a counsellor. So yeah, that I could, because I just thought it saved my life. I want to help other people, mm. and I yeah, yeah. realized like that just wasn't that wasn't for me. That wasn't counselling as a as a discipline as a mod modality wasn't what I wanted to do because it's just very harrowing. You're yeah. spending your time in people's darkness, helping them out of it, and yeah. I was just like, I just kept thinking, what's like, how do I be me? Like, what who am I? And what does that look yeah. like? And it literally yeah. wasn't until. What happened was when I decided I wanted to get divorced because he was very abusive. He was physically, mentally, emotionally abusive. And mm -hmm. that then led to the second wave. And bearing in mind, I've lived in fear, Mel. This, this whole time I'm in this fear of, please, God, don't come back and get me. That's like what I felt. It was like waiting for the catcher to come and get you. That's the, the black cloud. You were waiting uh -huh. for it to come again and descend uh -huh. upon you. Yeah, and not be able to get out of bed and not be able to eat and have pains in my stomach mm. and not want to, like, I couldn't speak. Like, I remember having days and days where I just couldn't speak and I didn't want to be like that again. Yeah, and, absolutely, um, yeah. And what happened was, you know, getting, like, getting divorced is not nice for anybody, is it? Like, it's not a nice thing to go through. It's not like I didn't have children mm. or anything like that, but I felt like a failure, even though, like logically mm -hmm. I understand it wasn't me that was abusive or anything like that but you still it was yeah. me that got myself into it I was a grown-ass woman that had married him so and I knew you know I thought I could change him and it would all be okay and you just needed to be settled yeah. and all of that crap that we tell ourselves when we've been yeah and that's that a strong, way. it's a strong voice that voice telling us that it's our fault that we've we failed we've done something wrong and I, I would imagine that coupled with the, the fear of, of the black cloud coming back, you were going to do yeah. anything you could yeah. to, um, no, this is me. I'll pull myself through this. I'll do this on my, maybe on my own. And um, where where do you turn from there? And I didn't I didn't know where to turn was the answer because I've, I had all of these. Like by now, you've built up this life. You've built up this bigger, you know lie of what people think you're like and you've yeah. got this and it literally felt like my world was crumbling down 
and, and, yeah. and it sounds really sad but like the thought of being away from him had to be weighed up against you'll lose the house you'll lose you stand like you stand like I just because I thought I was respected, so I was like, well, if everybody now realizes like what I've been married to all these years, like mm -hmm. they're gonna have no respect for us because they're gonna say, how can you be a leader of people yeah. when you allowing yourself to be treated like that? And because I yeah. had very little respect for myself, so it was difficult mm -hmm. to imagine that anybody else would have respect for me. So that yeah. whole then knowing that like the judge called it the worst financial quagmire to ever seen. Um, it was just like, it was just like an onslaught. There was police involved. There was stalking mm -hmm. behavior from him. Like it was just, and then you just get to that point again. And I remember getting to that point and saying, I just, like, I just, it would just be easier if I'm not here again. Like that was just the overwhelming. Yeah. I just can't handle it anymore. Like I've had enough. I'm tired. Yeah. Like, I'm 30 and I feel exhausted. <laughs> like I feel yeah. like I've dealt with 10 lifetimes worth of crap. Absolutely. Like, it's like, hang on, where's my like, let up where am I just going to get to be this carefree person with no problems yeah and um, I've never I don't think I'd ever been like I know it sounds dramatic but my mum said I was born a 40 year old like I've never really been like I've never been the girl that went mm -hmm. and did holidays with the girls and stuff when I was young I just didn't it just wasn't it just wasn't how it rolled so I yeah. just found myself back in this space and I'll never forget the day that I only told Cheryl this story quite recently and um it was a Friday night and I was in this house on my own and it and it was just and I just remember thinking yeah I think I'm done wow that was mm -hmm. a real like it felt as if you couldn't couldn't go on yeah. and um I hope I'm not upsetting anyone. This is just. I'm good. I have Can you see the Facebook thread? I can't see it. Yeah. I don't know. And people are just saying like it's awful, and. I'm just checking worry. it on my phone because I'll be able to see it on there. Yeah. Give you a minute to compose yourself, sweetheart. I am okay. No, I am genuinely okay. Yeah. Just remembering what that felt like, and it was really bizarre because yeah. literally at that moment the door burst open. Bear in mind, it was about nine o'clock on a Friday night, and my sister literally came flying through the door and said um I don't know what's going on but I feel like I need to be here and that wow. was literally what happened yeah so my sister came like rushing in and it was by this point he had moved we'd managed to get him out of the house and stuff like that yeah and um yeah and she came and um and I just, I remember like not being able to speak. And we didn't really speak about that day until last year. Isn't that funny? We didn't. And, and I'd mentioned it to her. I said, there's something I always needed to ask you about. And she said, um, it was about that night, wasn't it? And I said to her, she said, mm -hmm. I was, she was at home. And she said, I just had this overwhelming urge that I needed to be there. And I was like, I'm mm. so glad you did. She went, I don't even want to know. I went, neither. I went, no. It's like, because like I'm her rock, you know. It's like I'm the older yeah. sister. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and yeah, and I'm so grateful for that night. I know that sounds crazy, but that night, oh, everything, everything in my life changed after that night because I was like, I knew that that that's not like no, like that's not you. That's not who you are. Yeah. That's not what's going to happen to you. And literally no. was the next day I sat down with a book and I said, if this isn't my life, what do I want my life to be? Who am I? Yeah. yeah. By this point, you had already done so much to, um, to change your life. And what, what you're saying is I'd, I'd done all that and I, you had this moment and then you had to look forward and you were at the point where you you could you had that thought what is my life going to be like and what what do you do after that I just literally took it so I know this sounds crazy I read a book and I broke my life down into segments and I thought and literally mm -hmm. into health relationship I didn't like the thought of that one mm -hmm. um your wealth <laughs> spirit and I, yeah. and I had like yeah. columns and I just broke and I scored myself out of 10 just like we do with you guys you join the program you do your life yeah. Order, yeah. Like, this is the stuff that I use. when I say I used it I used it <laughs> and then I kind of worked out what like a life script like what I wanted my life to be and, and I felt so far from it but what I'd what I'd worked out was that 
I'd rather be on my own forever than to have been where I was. Like, I couldn't have got any worse. Like, and I'd just come to terms with that. I might lose the house and I might lose everything, but it's okay because it's just money. I'm safe. I'm well. I'm not dead in a ditch, which is where I thought I might be one day. So, yeah. like, I'm here and I'm alive yeah. and I'm meant to be yeah. here. I knew that. It's like the known. Like, yeah. I knew this was meant for, like, I was meant for something. And, um, and it was literally just then brick by brick of opening myself up and thinking, you're not perfect and do you know what if people judge you for what you've gone through they're not your people and it was just yeah. and the people and the funny thing was I didn't lose any friends over it I made better friendships yeah like, I hadn't long known Cheryl when this had all started like literally had met her mm -hmm. that year and just my friends were amazing Elaine would be around mm -hmm. here all the time checking I was okay and stuff and and I just and I was just started a different practice of life like I got intentional about my life I started thinking about yeah. what I wanted in a relationship if I ever had one again <laughs> like, like what did yeah. I want and what I worked out was I'd always sought the wrong things because I'd always sought them from this place of I'm empty and I don't know who I am and I need somebody else to come and and it makes mm -hmm. me good when I fix people so I'd always looked for people that were broken so I always ended yeah. up having very broken relationships because yeah. I felt like I could rush in and fix them. Yeah. And that's yeah. familiar to you as well. Broken yeah. is familiar. That's what you're used to. So you broken, will yeah. seek, seek that out. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I, I got really clear about what I wanted in my life and I just relaxed in it. I just thought, don't stress about it. If it's meant to be, it'll be. If I've learned anything, it's if something's meant to be, it'll be. And um, we got very clear about the values of the people that I would want in my life and the values of a relationship and mm -hmm. the fact that I was yeah. worried with having money. And just very yeah. much started doing all the stuff that we teach, like, you know, meditating and journaling and doing yeah. affirmations and just allowing myself to be happy. And was it, it wasn't like I just yeah. went, woof. It was, you know, it was a bit like that, but I meant... Yeah, well, you said like brick, brick by brick. You, took, you, you identified different pockets and then you started small yeah what I'm absolutely stunned by is that you didn't turn into some kind of control freak after all of this and you just kind of, when you said I just relaxed into it and I knew that my people would be my people and I, I am quite stunned you didn't go right I'm going to do this I'm going to do that no one's going to stand in my way and I'm duh, 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 duh. you almost went the opposite just went yeah okay um I'm here and I'm going to wake up every day and see what happens. Yeah, like because uh, I had been hanging on like that mm. all of that time trying to control everything and it just brought me yeah. misery and pain like it didn't. And I'm not saying that I'm not a recovering control freak. Like it will always be, I mean, Neil will probably have a very different story to this, but like, <laughs> like I am, you know, I do try and control housework and things like that. But just in yeah. general, I realized that, I hadn't made great decisions up till that point. So if I just let it go a little bit and see what happened yeah. and had fun, and I literally had fun, I would go out and just go out and like party and go and just, if I wanted to just take a day off and go to the pictures, I would, you know, stuff that I'd never done. I'd always been like so yeah. highly, like tightly wound together yeah. in case everyone saw the cracks that I didn't ever really stop for fun. So yeah. once I realized that actually I was quite a fun person. Mm -hmm. that made a I difference love, love this I love the fact that we in, instead of trying to trying to control everything when you just let it go and roll with it that makes you happier than yeah. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing and when and who's going to be doing it and how it's going to look um and I think that's that's quite a new thing for me. I'm still getting my head around that, that it's okay to just let go and roll with it. And then when I hear your story, yeah. when you had been through so much and you just did go, I'm letting it go. It did. It, it's turned out better than I hoped. Like Nadia said, didn't she, when Nadia McSheffy, when she was on last Monday, it's almost mm. even more than let it go, it's let it be. It's just let it be what it is. And I'm not saying that I'm like, it is literally daily practice for me now. I still mm. got to yeah, yeah. want to meditate about the kind of person I want to be. I still write mm -hmm. out what I want from my life. I still check in on my values. 
and learned something about that two weeks ago. So it is a process and it's it's right. it might not be sexy work, it might not be earth shattering, but it's what keeps me in check so that I know yeah. the black cloud is always a fair distance away. And then the other week I got it was just coming on me and it was like a few days of feeling like like a build up of something and, and I can feel mm -hmm. it, like I can see it on my peripheral vision. So I was like, what would you tell a client to do? I would tell a client to get help. So I rang Lorna, who was speaking last Thursday, and I said to her, because yeah. Cheryl was busy and stuff, so I was like, I just need to talk something through. I've got this weird thing going on, and I'm not sure what it is, and mm -hmm. I need, I can't coach myself. I need some help with it. So yeah, Lorna yeah. spent like 90 minutes on the phone with me working it out. And it's like stuff like that, just not like – it just makes life so much easier. We spend so much time sometimes struggling trying to work it out ourselves when we don't yeah. need to. So when people say to me, like, just think positively, and so, it's not about that. Like, I, I know it's not about that. Like, that's like a band-aid. Mm -hmm. But it, like when Michelle said the other day, like, sometimes being happy is hard. Like, sometimes it is hard to look yeah. for the negative when you're really in the tunnel. Sometimes you have to let it be. Sometimes you have to trust that it yeah. will get better. Mm -hmm. But for me, happiness is a choice. It's an active choice. It's something I choose yeah. to be happy because I chose control and I chose to try yeah. and fix. And I chose to think that if I could make everybody else happy, I would be happy. And it made mm -hmm. me miserable. It made Absolutely. me feel in the marriage or me yeah. or trying to fix other people didn't make the world a better place yeah. at all. No, you have, you have to be proactive for you because what was interesting about what you just said then which I think is a really good thing to bear in mind if if you feel your mental health is um isn't fantastic is when you noticed you were having a few days and you 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 felt not right you didn't just go come on Donna pick yourself up you've been through worse think positive you actually spent a little bit of time going like really recognizing it didn't feel right and then saying what can I do about this so yeah. you were being really yeah. proactive about your health yeah. and then you're like no I need to talk this through you didn't gloss over it by going think positive which in itself isn't really doesn't carry a great deal of weight do positive I think is probably better which is what you did yeah I know that's so true but it is so true but I did that for so many years like I, I said to my mum when it did all eventually come out and stuff I said like literally I've been sweeping things under the rug for that long the rug mm -hmm. is like Everest and like sooner, and this is, we say to people all the time, like what you don't deal with now, you will deal with down the line, but it'll be It's bigger. waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, I and saw when, something nice. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say when, when clients, you know, or people talk to us and they say, I see how it goes, I'll get the next year. I mean, we're not therapists, like that's not our job, but like, you know, if they're unhappy with something, seeing how it goes is mm. invariably not the answer. <laughs> like, that's just like leaving it the chance. I'm like, choose, choose action, yeah. choose inspiration. So letting things be and just not doing anything are very different things. It's like saying, yeah. like I'll, we call it surrender. It's like, I want the answer and I'm ready for it and I'm ready to work, do the work. So let me know what's the best next best thing to do and I'll do it and like listening then to your intuition to tell you what that next best thing is yeah yeah mm. so like we said it's it's about doing it's not about sitting back and waiting for things to come to you there are things that you can do um and yeah. it was Thomas yes not Thomas it was Neil who said you you know this does have to be regular practice um mm. taking charge of your life and keeping yourself healthy is regular practice don't wait until you're in that really dark place and what you have also demonstrated today was it's perfectly okay to ask for help and an hour and a half talking mm -hmm. through somebody could save you weeks of, of mental anguish and, and you get your head sorted and you know what direction you need to take yeah and I don't and know why it is this done I'm done 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 done. I know sorry guys but I'm just saying why is it so hard is there anything? The I don't know why we find it hard but it life is so much easier when you just ask for it I think you mentioned it in in the post and we've said this a lot there's still a stigma attached to this and I think there is an expectation um that we can just pick ourselves up brush it off be positive and, and everything will be okay. 
Yeah. And um, and I know from working with you that um, there's a lot of processes, there's a lot of choices, there's loads of things you do to make that happen. It's not as simple as brushing yourself off and you do need help. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that might just be a cup of, and a chat. I, I, as a leader, I think my fear was, and, and it happened sometimes, like if there, were, there was one organisation where, I, I did share with someone that I wasn't like, like I didn't feel good and I was feeling like quite stressed and stuff. I don't think I said depressed. And um, she kept looking at us going, are you okay? I don't, it's that look in it. Like you don't want that. Nobody wants that look. No. Yeah. And it's like, I feel so <laughs> yeah. When someone is brave enough, brave enough to tell mm. you that they're suffering from depression or anxiety or anything like that, ask them what they need. Yeah, don't ask them if they're okay. Yeah. Ask them what they yeah. need. They will know what they need. And it's empowering to say what you need rather than being, okay, yeah. like, what, what do you say to that? Like, what, mm. what do you well, say that's to it. That? <laughs> Are you okay? You've got a yes or no answer. If somebody says no, what is your next question going to be? Well, they don't want it's to know. Just you don't to position, no. like, are you okay? Because no. I haven't got time for this today. And don't ask if someone's okay. By the way, if you don't hear the friggin' answer, like when people say, "Are you are you okay?" Like it irritates us. Like ask them how they are and yeah, and, wait and like wait for the answer and be prepared for an, And I'm not okay. And then the other thing for me with leadership is the big learning for me. And like anyone who's worked with me knows, I get a real beat in my bonnet about return to work interviews because they're such a tick box exercise but there is so much support that could be given if return to work yeah. conversations were really looking to say is there something else going on under the absences and I always remember being a BT yeah. and I'd had another week off because I couldn't open either of my eyes and my cheek had been broken and being told well it's your third absence now so next time obviously it's going to go formal so you know you need to watch yourself that's not so, what you need to hear like, at all and like I'm, I'm in a leadership role I'm in an academy leadership role and I'm like one of the top performers and you're getting like outstanding ratings like do you not want to maybe check out the fact that I keep going off with the cold and I'm off for a full week like it, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. So like when, when we do return, I used to always say to my teams and leadership, like, really don't put the paper down, ask them how they are, mm -hmm. use your tidy senses, like how is someone doing? Yeah. And then pick up the piece of paper, tell them if there's anything yeah. going on that they want to share. You know, there's just so much more that we could be doing in the workplace as leaders. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah. And I, I worked in HR and engineering and trying to get an engineer to have more of a human conversation was very very difficult um yeah. because the majority of them were were male and um they were dealing with male employees and it was all very much oh we love the tick box it's so safe thank you there's your paperwork I can, my job is done so yeah yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it is a, an ongoing battle um it have is. we got a couple of minutes just to look through the comments and see if anyone's yeah, asked any I questions have. or anything anyone i don't know already so Joe's been catching the tips today. Thank you, Joe. You are a fun person. I can't always say who it is. You're a fun person. I'd say bonkers. Oh, 100%. I'm a recovering control freak. Yep. Welcome mm -hmm. to my world. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at my phone, but I think you, you're ahead of me. Yeah, I haven't gone right at the top because there's quite a few. Somebody said yeah. the Facebook user at 1 or 3 p.m. I think you also need to do your own timetable with what you're comfortable with. Yes, things will be waiting for you to deal with, but when you're ready, just don't avoid it forever. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's mm. true to my own story, but I see similarities. I will jump in the Facebook group, guys, and answer your queries and stuff as well if you've left any. Oh, Has yeah. anyone got any questions? Because I'm conscious of time. Return to work interviews really scream out if a manager is a true manager or a leader. 100%. Yeah. Whether you have another lunchtime live, I think you're right. We'll maybe do leadership at some point. Same with GPs behind the computer screen. Yeah. Oh, don't get me started on GPs. <laughs> if anybody's got any questions, I'm conscious of time for you all. If you want to put any messages in or ask any questions, I'll do what Neil did yesterday. I'll just jump on later on. And But, like, I am genuine, as you can see, I am genuinely okay. Like, it's not a – but for me, it's that moment of – um. Like when you relive something like that, it should it should be a fright, but it, it's the fright that keeps me conscious every single day of why I work so damn hard to love my life now. 
So yeah lot to appreciate but I think it's been absolutely fantastic hearing your story because I think well I'd, I'd hope it would inspire people that no matter how bad things get you can always talk to people and you have an incredible resource in yourself you just may need somebody else to help you see that and to yeah. hold your hand yeah. through it a little bit but yeah. once you're out we have got so much incredible power within us to heal ourselves and to look forward and to when I say take control I don't mean in a control freak mm, I mean yeah. you know this is, this is mine and I can make it how I want it to be and mm. um, that's one message I'm certainly taking away from talking to you it's really reinvigorated that belief that hey you know I can do something about this and mm. I think it's been incredibly inspiring a little bit sad but also very very inspiring so thank you for sharing it ends well it ends, it ends, ends well it ends fantastically <laughs> well absolutely oh. and uh, you'll be amused to us all <laughs> thank you so much my darling thank you guys oh, thank you and thanks everyone for tuning in thank so you bye for now bye